Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is going to be a nice and short, short and sweet little explanation video to show you what happened in this beautiful Porsche Boxster. What year is it Simon? 2013. 2013. Um, so the story behind this project is that actually we hardly did anything to make it happen. It was the owner who built the system. Yeah. Right. And you have background in car audio installation. What, what, when was the last year you did anything in a car? Uh, in the 90s, I think. Long time a ago. A long time ago. A long time ago. But at least you were very capable and you did an amazing job. Um, at what point did you contact me regarding designing the system to you? Well, it wasn't a long time ago. It was only a few months ago, maybe. Then. Enough just over a month oh, ago. Oh, just a month ago. No, we had so the meeting too. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Okay. And I needed, I knew I couldn't mm. install and set up a DSP amplifier. Yeah, but it was clear that you would want to go with a DSP amp. You wanted it fully active, so that was obvious. Yes, because the fitting of it was going to be really awkward because it needed to go underneath the driver's seat. Yeah. So, this system is very simple, but very, very capable. Currently, we are running on the factory head unit, but you fitted a CarPlay. Yeah. And the CarPlay module has a mini jack output, which gives us cleaner signal um, from the mini jack to an RCA straight into the DSP amp. On the top of that, um, we also fitted a HD Bluetooth module in the Helix V8 DSP amplifier. So we have two sources. We can switch simultaneously, well, completely seamlessly. We demoed it today. If you have a phone call coming in, it switches over automatically. It needs a bit of setting up, checking the levels and threshold. And then you don't even have to press anything. If you have a phone call coming in, it will switch over. You can have your phone call through CarPlay. And if you have an additional music player, then you can have the best quality streaming straight. Because people could say, okay, but the CarPlay is wired, but we could hear the difference today. Easily. Yeah. It's very obvious. Unfortunately, the CarPlay module is not designed for the finest quality. It's designed for connectivity, ease of use, and functionality. That's it. When it comes to quality, you know, the digital to analog converter in that tiny little thing is, is poor. It's not ideal. It works. It sounds okay, but it's not great. And the HD Bluetooth module can connect to a mobile device uh, with APTX, and that's good enough. We showed many cars where we stream because it's just convenient. You don't need extra wires. You don't need anything. You just connect on Bluetooth. Off you go. So that's our source with the Helix and doors. How long do you think that it took you to install the speakers in the doors? I think it took me an entire weekend just to do the sound dipping in the doors because mm. um, I've done three layers. And then there's the 18 speaker and the four inch mid in the doors together yeah. with classic, the cabling. Classic Porsche, so the 8 inch is at the front of the door and it's half blocked with this pocket and the mid-range is around here, isn't it? Yeah. Just no, hang on, no, 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 the, the mid-range is there, yeah. 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 Under the door handle, which is not quite optimal, but it's still better to have those two speakers separate because then this way you can set up the levels um, and the frequency range that you need to integrate to the tweeter on the dash way easier. Because some people could just keep the mid base, the eight inch mid base with a tweeter, and it could work. We could still do pretty good results. We saw it today from the measurements, but it's better this way if you also utilize the four inch mid range there. And honestly, six speakers, one amplifier, and it works awesome. Yes, you spent a weekend to soundproof the door, you treated the outer skin, so now this is not flimsy, it's more dead, although these cars are not flimsy to start with. No. One thing I also like in Porsche that the door cards don't use clips. They don't have clips, they have like a hook on type solution so the door card slides down and it's a pretty firm and isolated way of mounting the door card so it's less prone yeah. for buzzes and rattles and it, it works really well. The output we get from these smaller doors with the 8-inch Helix i3 drivers, so we went with the pretty much the cheapest option you can have. So from Helix we have the i3 range, 
the 8 inch bass driver, the 4 inch mid and the tiny little tweeter. All the speakers can have now plug and play adapters as well. So we had the plug and play adapters for the tweeter and the plug and play adapter for the mid. But we didn't go with the mid bass because it was just a bit pricey. I mean, for most people, for ease of installation, it's 100% worth it. Yeah. But then you are... If you wanted to do it quickly. Yeah. Also, you know, your experience, you could make adapter rings for mounting the mid bass. It didn't take too long, I guess. No, it didn't. It, it, took, me, it took me a day to make up the, the mounting rings and get them fitted. Yeah. But if it wasn't your time, and if, if you had to pay for it, then probably that £100 would be worth it. It would. Yeah, for, the, for the mounting frame for the 18 inch driver as well because because the mounting adapter for the tweeter and the mid is, is, is cheap it's like 15 20 Every, pounds everything's lined up and yeah. they work they work perfectly yeah so currently we run the six speakers as i mentioned but we still have scope for expansion because the amplifier has two more channels and these cars have rear fuel speakers right there behind the seat so that can be utilized for different presets uh, you can run rear fuel normally or differential and yeah i can i can tune them to add value to the listening experience for competition yeah those people who just want front left and right of course rear feel is like a plague <laughs> they don't want it but in a car like this where you want driving you know enjoyment and and listen to music in a relaxed way you need output too on the road, especially when the roof is down. So rear fuel can be useful for that reason, if anything, even more. So that's another option that can be utilized in these cars. And we also looked into the option to potentially fit a front subwoofer, which is not impossible, although the space is, is, not, is not great. But um, I have a customer who has an older Boxster and he has a little custom enclosure on just that side. So it's not using up the whole legroom is just on like probably like 40 percent of the floor space so the subwoofer is in uh, you know more like the towards towards the middle of the center console and it's taking up a bit of a space on the side of the center console molded onto it and an 8 inch driver can just give a bit more kick and punch below 50 hertz it can be useful not that currently the 8 inch drivers in the doors don't do an amazing job we will have a little demo for the guys yeah we always say not to use it as a reference, but it helps to imagine what it can be like. And we were both very surprised today what this simple system is doing. I mean, yes, it's simple. It's only six speakers running fully active, so you had to pull in all the wires. And that took time too. Yeah, it did. Yeah, running new speaker cable through the doors is never an easy job. You were lucky though, because in these cars, there's no plug there's a rubber boot so you have clean path to push extra cables through right but yeah bring in the power cable in bring in the signal cable from the carplay to the amplifier or the speaker cables even that took time and yes the topic may come up you know pete how much is a system like this we were thinking about it because the outcome is amazing and every single porsche should have a system like this to start with without extra subwoofer or extra madness but if if you have to go to your shop and hey you have to get it installed it's going to take time soundproofing the doors doing the whole wiring setting it up i would easily say minimum 50 hours work and depending on which shop you go to they're going to multiply that hour with the labor rate and then it costs serious money plus the equipment of course and we chose the cheaper speakers and that's when people will be like okay so amplifier and speakers roughly one and a half grand right but then you have in reality you have over three grand labor rate in this country of course in different countries that cost is going to be different in india is going to be different in america it's going to be even more yeah or there are many other countries where it would cost even more but then that's when people start to yeah feel like you know is it worth it is it well i was lucky i could do quite a bit of it myself yeah so but I knew I couldn't tune it and I knew I needed yeah. your help for that. And not, not like, nobody would say that it, it's not worth it and they wouldn't want it. It's just whether they can justify that price. That's well, a different I, story. 
I wanted it to sound good and I didn't see the point of buying good equipment. Even if the speakers are relatively cheap compared to others, if it's not going to sound good because I can't tune it. Yeah. So. And we could demonstrate that today too. Going back to the absolute basic settings on the DSP compared to the final tune when we finish the tune, it's day and night. Everything just comes alive and it, it plays so good. So good. It's even more impressive when you use cheap equipment, cheap speakers, and the outcome is so great. Because then people think that it's because you use expensive gear, but it's not. And in this case, it demonstrated it really well that you don't need that crazy amount of money to get good results. Because you know what? What these speakers are doing right now, I don't think that it would be such a big difference if we fitted the i7 range. Okay. And the i7 costs considerably way more. I'm sure there would be a difference, but how many people can justify that? Yeah. It's not like that these speakers from the i3 range don't perform well because they do amazingly. And honestly, compared to the price, and then if we compare those prices to other options, because when we had the first phone call, phone call, we were talking about other options, other brands, we don't name them, and none of that would have been cheaper. No. And, and I can guarantee we wouldn't have been better. It's 100% not better because there are many other options for Porsche. Well, I wanted to use equipment that you supplied yeah. because I knew that you would be able to get the best out of it. Yeah, definitely. But plus, yeah, what we use is not something we use just for the sake of selling. We use it because we know that the performance is there and the price is very justifiable. It's not just like spending money, you know, without any thinking. Because, yeah, I could have convinced you to, oh, it's like, come on, let's spend more money on speakers and then spend less money on that amp. But that's something I, I try to convince you, have the better amp, have the V8, as opposed to a match. Even the, the match amplifiers from AudioTech Fisher, they work amazingly, and that could have fitted easier. But the V8, I think, is, is a great long-term investment and value. It, it does such an amazing job. We fit it all the time, everywhere, in daily simple systems. So yeah, that's what we're going to show to you guys. Nice, nice and simple system in this beautiful Boxster. We will have a short little demo video as well, just so you get a bit of an idea. For that, you will need your headphones because I'm recording with my Bean Oro microphone. So that gives you a bit more realistic picture of what it can sound like in real life. And also I have to mention that we have our Patreon channel where we share a lot more, a lot of behind the scene content, RT evaluations, like even today when I was evaluating the measurements to Simon to the owner, then you got the explanation what's happening. And you could also hear today what it's like with or without the changes yes. of the response. And if you, if you don't get a system tuned by somebody who is really, really, you know, experienced and understands how to tune, you can, you can go so wrong so easily. Even these cheap, speak, cheap speakers would sound horrible. Easily. We could, we, could, we could see that today. Yeah, we could. They could yeah. sound so bad, so harsh. Tweeters especially. The tweeters are mounted right up there on the dash, underneath that grill. And to the time the sound comes out from that grill, it causes such a colorization to the sound that the tweeters are harsh as hell. And it's not the speaker's fault, it's the environment's fault. And without measuring it properly, setting it up properly, it can sound horrid. And that's when people would be like, okay, it's because I have cheap speakers and it's, it's not the case. You don't have to spend more money if something doesn't sound right. You should rather have the question in your mind first, was it tuned properly? Was it tuned at all? Because many cars, probably in UK, I would say 90% of the systems that go out onto the road from shops, they're not tuned properly. That's the sad reality. Probably even higher percentage. Yes, many people may say that, oh, I, it, it was tuned with, with some magical, like something like bit tune, you know, fancy looking measurement system. And then, you know, it's as good as it can be. But I can, I can prove everybody wrong that it's not. And, and I, I always offer our services. If you have a system, Come along, I have 100% guarantee I can tune your car and you don't have to pay anything if you don't deliver the results. If you're not happy with the results, you don't have to pay, you can drive away. And I will delete my preset. But that has never happened. So it's not being big-headed, it's just simply understanding the situation on the market, 
not just in this country, but in many other countries, in order to find somebody who can truly understand acoustics and can tune properly, that's, 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 that's a big thing. That's what I'm trying to change globally and, and train people, because until we don't have every single shop on our level when it comes to tuning, the results are poor and yep. customers are not that happy. And that doesn't help the industry. I want the industry in a, in a place where everybody's happy. You know, your wife is happy, your family, your friends are happy when they hear a well set up car. And then that brings more business and more happiness for the customers. But many of them don't even think about upgrading a system because if now, let's say you spent all this time and it sounds poor, what would they think? You'd be disappointed and think you'd wasted your money and your time. But you know, what would they think? They would be like, yeah, they would laugh at you. Yeah. They won't do that. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that after this, because this thing is amazing, honestly, what we got out of it. So I'm going to leave it here. Check out the description for Patreon, where you can see the extra content, RT evaluation, whatnot. We have weekly topics, all sorts of crazy stuff that you can learn from. If you are one of those who want to learn and want to do maybe a project like this on your own and you just need help with the final bit, and yeah, check out the other video. We will have the demo video. Other than that, I will see you in the next one. Take care.